Hey guys, so we're back working on the Ford EcoSport today. Um, another how-to, and today we're gonna be doing an oil change. And this is pretty much everything you're gonna need in order to do it. Uh, the EcoSport is very simplistic, um, doesn't take a lot of effort. An oil change in generally should only take you, um, if you're kind of meandering, about 30 minutes. Worst case scenario, an hour if you're standing around talking, drinking a beer the whole time. Anyway, I have the two liter uh, four cylinder, so I'm going to need four and a half quarts of oil. So I have five here. Um, it'll differ based on which motor you have in the car, but the process should be pretty much exactly the same. You're going to need a Ford Motocraft um, oil filter. Uh, I only use Ford Motocraft because I believe that they are um, what the manufacturer puts on the vehicle itself. So in order to keep the vehicle running as long as possible, I use what the manufacturer recommends. Um, next, you're gonna need a 3 8 drive socket wrench and a 15 millimeter um, socket. Uh, something to keep in mind is I actually haven't worked on the 1.5 or the uh, one liter yet, so you may have a different size socket that you'll need, but for the two liter, this is what is required. You'll need a funnel and you'll need an oil pan. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab our 15 millimeter socket. I can get under here. 15 millimeter socket, we're gonna go ahead. Yep, that's the right size. Go ahead and grab our wrench. I'm gonna break free the drain plug. Ooh, smash my finger on that one. Ouch. All right. Go ahead and slide our oil pan under. I'm going to go ahead and take out the plug. So if you apply pressure to the plug until you feel the tooth skip, there it is, tooth skip, back it out another quarter, and then move your hand out of the way nice and fast, and your oil will start draining. Go ahead and adjust your pan. So the way I adjust my pan is I put the very edge of the pan underneath the drain plug and I have the rest of the pan towards the direction the drain plug is going to be spitting. And I do that because you never know how far the drain is going to spit. So I do it nice and far and then once I pull the plug and I see how far it's draining then I'll pull the pan inward put it to right where it needs to be. So go ahead and let that drain. And something you can do to help it drain a little bit faster, something to keep in mind, um, or something you can do to help it drain faster, is just open your top port. And I just leave it in there at an angle so that it vents without allowing stuff to get into it. You can see that's nice and drained out now. And we'll go ahead and let this keep going. And let this keep going until it gets down to a drip. All right, so we're going to go ahead and, and examine our plug. So I've been told by the local mechanic shop that if the o ring is above the surface, which you can see right there it's still above the surface of your plug then you don't need to replace it so I will not be replacing this today all right now we're down to a little tiny dribble go ahead and put our plug back in And 
little snug it down. All right, next we're gonna change our oil filter. We'll go ahead and move the pan directly below it. I'm just gonna twist it off. It shouldn't be on here too tight. Here we go. Uh, and if it is on here too tight, then uh, you'll need a filter wrench in order to change it. But last time I changed this one, I didn't make it too tight. And this one's one of those inevitable, you're gonna get oil on you. So always have a rag around. Um, I use a towel that I can lay on. Um, but go ahead and let that drip out. One thing to remember is never, it's, it's a lot better to just hold on to it, get covered in oil when taking it off, than to let it drop and splash in your pan. All right, got the filter off and it's drying. We're gonna go ahead and very slowly slide the pan out because this is like maximum this pan can hold. And I don't want to spill it all over my garage floor. All right, take the towel. Go ahead and come on up in here. And clean everything off. Pull up the oil plug. Clean around. Oil filter. Port. All right. Next. Okay, so next, we're gonna go ahead and take our oil filter, stand it upright, and take a dab of oil. We're gonna put it around the rim. And all we're doing with this is just giving it a very light film on it so that the um, O-ring on this is not going to stick to the motor itself when we go to do another oil change. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to try and do this uh, with one hand. Hopefully I don't spill all my oil. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and fill the oil filter up. And there you go. Just do it till it's full. Um, and basically the only reason you want to do that is you're trying to get all the air out of your oil filter um, just because it'll make it a little bit easier to cycle uh, your oil through. You're not having to burp oil out of the system or air out of the system as much um, doing this method. So just keep keep doing it. It'll keep pushing up air bubbles. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be full the very first time you pour it. But there we go. There's one more air bubble. Oop, another air bubble. Okay, so go ahead and put a little bit more in. All right, so now I'll go ahead get down under the car without spilling my oil filter. Come up in here. We're gonna go ahead and screw on our new filter. So I like to just hold it with my thumb till I get it started. And then once it's started, screw it on. And you're going with snug, you're going with hand tight, not wrench tight. So Pretty much just till it crushes the o-ring and then you're done motor craft and the filter got that back on double check your oil plug make sure it is on there this is a massive mistake that people make they let the oil drain out then they move on to their filter and then they forget to put the plug back in 
or they forget to put it in before the filter, um, double check this right before you start pouring oil into your motor. That way it doesn't pour out on the floor or worse, pour out and then you drive the car away and blow up your motor because you don't have any oil in it. Okay, so now is start filling up our oil. So go ahead and take the cap out, put it somewhere we'll remember it. And go ahead and take our oil uh, funnel. I'm not sure why I kept trying to say filter. Set our funnel in. Grab our first quart and start pouring. So the way they design these bottles specifically with the spout on one side instead of in the center, that way you can pour it like this and it won't start pouring until you get to the very end. That way it's not doing the glub, glub, glub. Here, I'll actually show you the glub, glub, glub because it's one of the most annoying things. So if you do it this way, see how it's doing that? It's creating air bubbles inside of this and causing it to be sporadic and splash everywhere. So if you pour it this way, it won't splash and it goes nice and smooth. All right, it's gonna be a half a quart or one quart in there because that's the same one we poured in to the filter. Start on the next one. Now based on the kind of funnel you get, you might get um, overflow. So this was a really cheap one that I found at the local big box store, department store. So definitely um, like this one. It even comes with an attachment that it's a bendy elbow for doing other projects with. Um, so that's always nice. So this one's a good fil uh, good funnel. Um, doesn't doesn't really create any backsplash or anything. Number four. And here's number five. So on number five, we're only gonna put just under half of the amount in, half of a quart. So we're just over half a quart left in the bottle. So now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna check our dipstick, pull that out. You're gonna wanna clean your dipstick. Now, checking your dipstick, you're gonna go ahead and put it all the way in and then pull it out. Actually, we'll just let it sit for a sec so the oil adheres. And you go ahead and pull it all the way out. When you look at the tip of your dipstick, you're gonna look for where that oil, for where that oil ends. Come on, you can do it. Okay, so you can see where the oil ends Right there, about halfway between the line, the dots. So we're gonna put some more in. I'm gonna do just a little bit of a touch. We're gonna give it about 30 seconds to drain down into the pan before we check the dipstick again. So, 30 seconds, go. Okay, 30 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and wipe our dipstick again. All right, you're going to go ahead and wipe your dipstick again. I'm going to go ahead and put it in, put it all the way down, pull it all the way out. 
You're going to check your oil level. And we are sitting, so you can see it's not quite to the dot, but if you turn it to the back side, you can see that etched zone. So the dot is going to be over full, and the etched zone is right where you want it in. The, the dot toward the tip is going to be the bad zone. The dot toward the handle is going to be way too overfilled. So the edge zone is right where you want it, right at the peak of the edge zone, which is where I got it. So I'm calling that good. I'm going to put that back in. Going to take our funnel back out. Put that there. Put our cap back on. That's pushed in all the way. What's the next thing we do? Check your oil. Make sure nothing major happened and you didn't spill it out all on the floor. We'll go ahead and feel that. No oil residue. Look at our filter. No oil residue. All right. We'll go ahead and start it up. You're gonna let that run for about 30 seconds just to work it through the motor. Probably good. All right, I'm go ahead and turn it off. 30 seconds for it to go back down into the pan. This is actually a pretty crucial step that a lot of people miss, is not waiting or double checking your oil right afterward. Um, you know, there's a certain amount of oil that when it gets sucked up into the motor, it um, stays as a film on the rest of the motor, uh, you know, throughout your motor so that when you start it up in the morning, it's not completely dry and wear out your engine. So we're gonna go ahead and wait our 30 seconds. I think and we're gonna go ahead and insert our dipstick. I can find the hole. All right, and pull it back out. And we're gonna look at where we are sitting for oil. And we are perfect. So there you go. Here's how you do an oil change in your Ford EcoSport. Um, I'm trying to do these how-to videos because I can't seem to find any other how-to videos online. So I hope these videos are helping everybody. I know I'm a little monotone and I tend to, to um, meander a little bit and talk a bit of gibberish. But I hope that these are helping some people. And if you guys would like to see more, if you guys would like to see certain things if you guys have corrections that you notice i'm doing that are wrong or you guys want um to leave comments make sure you like subscribe um hit the little bell for more videos and whatnot and i'll see you guys next time